which we edited externally. So now, anytime I want to change the settings, I can just change this. Hello and welcome to another how to code a game like Minecraft in Unity video. This is part 18, I think. Yes, part 18. And in this video, we are going to make a external loader for settings. There's five or six different things that I want to do in this uh, series next. The problem I'm coming across is that basically I just can't decide which bit would be best to do first. All of these sort of cross over a little bit. So for example, for having the external block data, it would be greatly beneficial if I had the complete block data hierarchy set up all the information that we need for a block before trying to do an external data load and we're not there yet. I'm just having to try and pick and choose which ones I want to do now and then have to revisit later when I've added another feature and which ones we can just get on with. So while I wrestle with those demons, we're going to do an external settings file, which is nice and simple. And it's some of the technique we're going to use here will come in later for the uh, external block data. So let's get started on this. And the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to open our world file. And we're going to need to create a new class, which is getting very crowded in here, actually. We'll uh, we'll probably do a refactoring episode at some point. So this class is going to be serializable for now. Which, if you don't remember, is it needs to be serializable so that we can see it in the inspector here. And then we're just going to call it public class, nice and simple, settings. Now, it's not really important for the game as such, what we put in here right now, this is probably going to be a matter of preference, to be honest. I mean, there's going to be some stuff that you definitely want to have in here, but if you decide that you don't want the exact stuff that I put in here in your settings class, it's it's not going to break the game. As long as you have your settings in place, it should be fine. So the first setting that I want to bring across is actually one from voxel data, and that is view distance. So all, all these up here, chunk width, chunk height, uh, world size, mm. world size is a bit different, but chunk height, chunk width, the size of the texture, all that kind of thing, that stuff is fixed. So that stuff does not want to change once the game is underway, because if we change the size of the chunk midway through the game, it's gonna cause all kinds of hell when it generates chunks and all sorts. View distance, we can change at any time. So that doesn't really need to be a public static read only class. So we're going to get rid of that from here. And the reason we're deleting it now is so that all the errors will pop up and then we can quite easily find instances of it. But for now, we're going to put in here public. Nope, it's not an int, not a float. Public int view distance. And then what we'll do just to uh, get rid of those errors for now is we'll come up to the top. We'll go here and we'll create a new public settings and we'll just call it settings. And then if we go find these instances, instead of voxel data dot view distance in chunks, we're just going to say settings dot view distance. And then we'll copy that and replace all these. And now if we go into our world in the inspector, we should find we have this settings drop down here and in the view distance, we can change the view distance. We had it set at five, so I'm, I'm gonna bump it up to nine just so we can see a difference in it working. And we'll run that and hopefully it should all work. There we go, and it's taking longer to load this time, but it is loading much more world than it was loading before. And obviously when the game's actually running properly, you wouldn't see this happening because you'd be looking at a loading screen while the world is being generated. I'm going to bump that back down just because we're going to be loading the game and, and unloading it and everything, so we don't have to wait that long every time I load the game. But now that we've done that, the next thing we need to do is decide what we want in here. So one of the first ones, and it's one that people have asked about in the uh, comments quite a few times, is the mouse sensitivity. So we'll create a new flow, and we can organise these later. For now, let's just put them in as they come to mind. And then to implement mouse sensitivity, it'll open a player script. And if we go find where we rotate things, so mouse horizontal, mouse vertical, we'll times that by world.settings.mouse sensitivity. And we'll go back here, and just for ease sake, we'll put a range on that. So we don't want it to be not, because that wouldn't move at all. So we'll start with 1f, and we will go up to 100f which might be a bit excessive. We'll test it and see. 
There we go, we've got a mouse sensitivity slider. So one is basically what it was before. So let's just run that and see how much of a difference changing it makes. Oh yeah, that's very drastic. <laughs> okay, so maybe up to it, I dread to think what 100 is going to be. <laughs> Unusable is what 100 is going to be. So we'll change those values a bit. Let's go 0 0.1 to 10. I don't think anyone's going to need to go more than that. And obviously 0 0.1, also pretty much unusable. <laughs> but uh, you get the idea. So I think 2 will be a nice, uh, a nice value for now. And obviously you play with these values, get everything how you like it. So the next one we will add is enable threading. We'll start to break these into categories. So this one wants to be up here. And we're going to call this, what do we call it in the, up here? Performance. So yeah, view, view distance. Enable threading, that, that all falls under performance. And then this one we'll just call controls, I guess. Now I'm not sure if these headers will actually show up because I think you need to... Oh, they do, okay. Um, I seem to remember there being a thing, maybe it was an older version of Unity where if you didn't have a class in its own file, sometimes the headers didn't show up in the inspector. But maybe I'm remembering that right. Actually, it might have been scriptable objects. So now that we've got that, let's just go up here and we will delete that. And then once again, we can swap out our enable threading references for settings dot enable threading. And then we want that enabled. We'll have a new category, which we'll call world gen. And then we'll put in here, we'll put our seed. So actually that wants to be public. Public seed, public int seed. And then we'll go up here and we'll delete seed from here. And then if we go down here, we can just stick settings in front of that. And that fixes that. That now becomes part of our external file. And again, you wouldn't really have that in your settings file. This is more for game settings. So this is just to get more values into the uh, into the settings because if we're going to save it to an external file, it seems a bit pointless just saving three values. So we've got our seed in there and then we'll just put a random value in there. Now we can't put our biome in there because we can't save a biome. The way that we're going to save it, we can't save a biome file. We can do st other stuff. We can. It doesn't actually matter because that's not how the biomes are going to work when we get further into the world generation so that would pretty much just ignore that biome file and then we'll just stick a few other values that don't actually do anything right now but you know we can save them anyway so header we'll call this one game game data yeah we'll go with game data uh, and we will say public string version version and I think we will go with that so if we just wait till version pops up 0, 0.0.01 0 .01. I don't know so we've set the settings in the inspector here we're now going to save those settings to a file and we're going to use a JSON file so if you don't know what JSON is it's basically a way of saving data in in a very readable format although the way unity outputs it there's no line break so it, it becomes incredibly less readable but it's it's a readable format so it's, it's clear text and you can quite easily save fields so we could have multiple instances of game settings for example and then each field within those game settings and it and it saves them in parentheses in curly brackets and then you can extract them back out of the file in much the same way so if we're going to go we we'll go back into our world and we're going to need we can remember the name of system dot i think it is well, there's no error so that must be the right one and we'll go down to start and before we get into anything else we're going to say new string json export equals and then we want json utility dot to json and then we're going to pass it these settings so basically that is going to take our settings file uh, settings class sorry convert it to json formatting and then stick it into this string so if i then debug dot log json export now if we then run that and we're looking console, you can see that we've got all the data 
all the data that we've just saved in that settings class has been saved into that string there. So what we can do then is we can save that string to a text file. And the way we'll do that is we will say file dot write all text. Then we're going to pass in application dot data path plus we'll call it settings dot cfg i don't know it doesn't really matter as long as the file format is correct unity doesn't care what you call it and then we're saying json export because that's the that's the json string that we're passing in and this actually wants a slash there because the application path doesn't include a slash so if we then try that and this time we're going to be watching our asset window rather than our console we should see a file pop up again we don't oh there it is and as you can see we have all our information there and now what we can do with this is we can then load back out from the from the file that we've just saved to and then the way we're going to do that is we will comment this out to start with uh, we don't need this we don't need this and then we start off with a string which we're going to call json import and it's going to equal file dot read all text read all text and then we want this exact same path and obviously if you ever change this uh, settings location or the name of the settings file it's going to cause problems in here pass in that exact same path so that will load in in the same way that we converted our player data to a string and then exported that string to a file. We're now bringing that same data file or that same data back in as a string. And then we're going to say settings equals JSON utility dot from JSON. And then we want to give it type settings and then we say json import now if i run that now we're not going to see a whole lot of, well we're not going to see any difference unless something's wrong and there's an error however if we now change if i open this up and i change let's say view distance to 15 something big and then save that and we press play we're now getting a much bigger world and if we look at our world script here our settings now has 15 as the view distance because that has been loaded from the external file which we edited externally so now anytime I want to change the settings I can just change this and obviously the plus side of that is if you ever for some reason accidentally wipe your inspector or anything like that all of the information will be stored in your settings file which right now when we've only got this many settings is, and some of them aren't even necessary is not a big deal but as the game progresses it will become more of a big deal to have your data stored external to the unity editor and especially when we really start getting into the block data types because right now with whatever we've got in here 12 different or not even 12 11 block data types it's not again not that big a deal but if you think about is something like uh, i'm sorry i'm not sure exactly 256 default vanilla minecraft blocks i might have just pulled that number out of thin air but there's you know quite a few blocks and if we had all the information for all of those blocks stored in the inspector here and then we accidentally deleted that array for some reason or renamed it in the script and forgot that that clears all of the array data here that would be a nightmare so that's all for now like this is a bit of a uh, this, this is a far shorter video than normal for especially for a minecraft video i did mention at the start i'm i'm having a bit of a bit of an existential crisis as to which direction to go next uh, the lighting obviously is important but the lighting is another one that is kind of do i want to wrap that up in with some more shader work because some of the shade the shader is far from finished it's just we had got it far enough done to be able to do the lighting and i didn't want to spend episodes and episodes on the shader I'd like basically i don't want to spend too much time on any one aspect if i can move on i want to try and keep things moving around so that we're learning different things so um yeah that's that's the struggle i'm going through at the minute but i will figure it out eventually if we have to bounce around a bit we will bounce around a bit but that's it for now and i will figure out what i'm going to do for the next video before the next video thanks for watching bye bye